This video was sponsored by JLC PCB. Just like always, I started the project by doing some PCB design in Fusion 360. I've carefully recreated the original driver board, which then I've used as a blueprint for my own version. With the design pretty much finished, I've created the Gerber files by going into the manufacturing tab and running the CAM processor using the JSC PCB 4 layer CAM file. You can of course get the ready-made Gerber files directly on my Patreon page. With the Gerber files prepared, I went to the JSC PCB website, clicked Add Gerber files, selected my zip file and waited a second for it to upload. As you can see, the website is now showing the preview of the PCB boards. Here you can change all sorts of things, like board thickness or solder mask color. Once you're done with the changes, just click save to cart and place the order. As always, the package arrived very fast. There was absolutely no issues with shipping. Everything came safely packaged in nice blue cardboard box. The PCB itself came inside a plastic bag, which makes sure that no moisture is getting inside while in transit. And here I've got the original driver board. My design is heavily based on this exact PCB. So now let's assemble the board and see just how well it performs. Each time you order from JSC PCB, you get at least 5 pieces minimum, sometimes even 6. As you can see, the board quality is really premium. You can easily see all of the traces, even the smallest ones. And here you can see the direct comparison with the original driver board. As you can tell, it's almost the same. Of course, I changed a couple of minor things, like rounded edges on corners and nicer solder pads. I will start the assembly process by covering whole board with liquid flux. This makes the hotter soldering way easier. And now I will cover all of the solder pads with solder. And just like that, the board is ready for the assembly. I will do all of the soldering off screen, so you won't get bored to death. After a while, the board is now fully soldered. As you can see, it's almost identical to the original one. The whole driver board uses only one micro HDMI cable for both voltage and video signal. I've connected it directly to my PC and you should now be able to see my Windows desktop. Those weird colors on the screen are only visible on the camera. It's caused by my iPhone refresh rate. So now it's time to assemble the plastic pieces. I've started by printing the halo. It's a simple plastic mount that sits directly on your face. I've modeled it after the Google Glass. Next up is this small plastic cradle. This will be the main housing for the driver board. It's designed to perfectly fit this exact PCB. The PCB installation is super basic. You simply push it in inside the plastic housing. I've designed it to be as small as possible while eliminating any structural issues. This plastic piece along with the PCB goes directly on top of the headband. It's meant to attach on top of this big square. It also works as electronics cover. When you have both pieces properly aligned, you can melt them together using your spare soldering iron. It's absolutely the easiest way to do this. And now the electronics are properly installed. Just make sure not to damage the display FFC cable. This chunky piece right here is the main display and optics housing. It's little big for now, but I'm working to get it smaller. The display housing assembly is a bit more complex. First you will have to carefully insert the display and after that insert the FFC cable while bending it at a 90 degrees angle. There won't be any damage if done correctly. It should now look like this. Make sure that the display assembly is properly aligned with this plastic piece right here. Both edges should match each other. When you have it aligned properly, melt both pieces together using soldering iron, just like before. Now it almost looks like finished product. Of course there is still some work to do. Now let's make the magnifier. For this build, I will use two acrylic lens, which I've got from AliExpress. I don't have the exact links for them, since I've got it a long time ago. Of course, I've also prepared a couple of plastic pieces, which will help me in trimming them down. The trimming process is super simple as well. I basically put inside the lens and trim it down using my power tools. Both of the lenses are pretty much the same size now. So now that we have the lenses ready, we can install them inside the display assembly. First goes the uncut lens. 
Make sure that the lens is sitting perfectly level with the plastic piece. And make sure to clean all of the lenses each time you touch them. And now I put inside the lens which was trimmed down. And just like that the full lens assembly is now complete. It still needs the combiner, so let's make one. I've designed this small plastic jig which will help me to cut out the combiner. Just like always I will use the semi-transparent HUD plastic that you can get from those cheap HUD screens for your phone. The whole cutting process is pretty simple. I put the plastic jig on top of the HUD plastic and mark the cutting lines using my knife. With the markings ready I will cut out the proper shape using my power tools. And here is the finished piece. It has perfect size and shape for this build. And now we can install the combiner inside the plastic housing. But first let's remove any protective film. Remember that there is protective film on each side, so don't worry if it's not super clear. The HUD plastic is super delicate, so don't scratch it with your fingernails. After removing all of the protective films, you can install the combiner by pushing it inside those plastic grooves right next to the magnifier. After installing the combiner, the build is pretty much complete. It looks pretty sleek and it's super lightweight. It also works with any kind of HDMI devices, so you can use it with your Raspberry Pi or your regular Windows PC. So let's hook it up now and see how it works. Just like before, I will connect it directly to my PC. I'll definitely have to get the 90 degrees cable for this one. As you can see, it works pretty well. You can see the desktop image clearly and the image is pretty sharp. But what if you would like to use it outside? With the current setup, the display image doesn't show up properly when in direct sunlight. Luckily, I've already found a solution. I've designed this small plastic jig which will let me cut out the sunlight proof front glass. It works basically the same as the previous one. With the front glass markings ready, I can now cut out the proper shape. And here is the finished front glass. It's now ready to be assembled onto the plastic frame. But first, you will have to remove all of the protective film. Just like the combiner, the front glass can be easily scratched with your fingernails. So be careful during the installation. When you have it in correct spot, simply melt the plastic together just like before. And now it's fully ready for the outside use. It may look weird, but it works very well. Overall, I'm quite happy how it turned out. Of course, I will still keep on improving it. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching everyone and hope to see you in the next video. And as always, huge thanks to my patrons. See you later and goodbye.